is a nice Royal Enfield Continental 250 that I've been working on or just starting to work on actually and I haven't had it running yet it's uh, been brought here in need of recommissioning and I've just gone over a few basics and decided to drain the oil and get the primary chain case cover off because I was told the uh, owner wasn't happy with the gasket on that I also found that the primary chain is very very worn on it there was a extremely tight area on it which was too tight and then if you turned the engine a bit it went quite slack so we'll be fitting a new primary chain to it and I'm in the process of stripping it down in order to get that off and there was also mention of the clutch not working very well well the operating mechanism was badly adjusted the lever would only pull about halfway back and go hard so I've sorted all that out anyway by adjusting the little screw and lock nut adjuster on the other end of the push rod assembly here and the cable as required so I was happy with that but I pulled the clutch in and pressed the kick starter and it was still dragging very heavily and um, going into the clutch I've seen that obviously the pressure plate is very badly buckled and damaged you can see the three holes there probably one is all right one looks all right the other two are very badly distorted probably see it better from this side actually and when we consider the springs pressure plate springs bare against there that's not very good but also the dished plain plate the outer one has been fitted the wrong way round the dish is supposed to face inwards this is facing outwards so it's not even on the splines of the clutch center properly so obviously that's another thing I'll deal with and anything else in there as required will be looked at as well but that's just in the first sort of hour or so's work of what I've been doing on it really that I've already found those things so um, plenty of room for improvement already but we'll keep going and see what else there might be lurking in there in need of sorting out just found another little thing I'll be attending to on this uh, Royal Enfield Continental 250. As I found on many um, Royal Enfield 250 and uh, even the 350 and 500 bullet singles. We look at the footrest, the hexagon bar there going right through from one side to the other. You can see exposed hexagon bar there between the engine plates. Now that's not supposed to be exposed. That's supposed to have, is supposed to be sleeved with this spacer tube which fits between the engine plates so that when you tighten the footrest nuts up they actually clamp the footrest assembly, the engine plates and the engine and frame all together tightly at that point and that can't happen without this spacer tube and you can actually get quite twitchy wobbly handling without that and the footrests generally wobble and flop around no matter how much you keep trying to tighten them so it's going to be a bit of a fiddly job but I've got the new spacer tube there so I'm going to get the footrest bar out I'll probably have to somehow try and either prise the engine plates apart a little or maybe put this in the lathe and skim a little off the length of it because no doubt as often happens the engine plates will have buckled and bowed inwards a little but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it but I'll fit this and that'll firm things up and probably make the handling and the bike feel a lot more rigid and firm than it probably currently does. So another little job to do there. There we are with the spacer tube fitted now between those engine plates beneath the engine and that should help firm things up a little bit if the handling was a little bit twitchy. But at the very least, I'll be able to tighten the footrests up and they won't rock and wobble backwards and forwards as they do on so many of these machines. Uh, for some reason or other, that tube often seems to be missing. There must be a great big pile of them somewhere, I think. Anyway, this one's got one now, so that's all that matters here. Well, more on this Royal Enfield Continental 250. And I've had the clutch apart to um, do some work on it and attend to um, a dished plain plate in there that was fitted the wrong way around amongst other things and uh, change swap 
some friction plates around for admittedly another used one or two but with better uh, depth of lining materials on to improve the clutch a little and I fitted a new primary chain as well because the uh, the old one seemed to have tight and slack spots and also had a spring link in it which is not a great idea really um, because if that uh, flew apart for any reason and this lot wrapped itself around something it could do all sorts of damage and even perhaps cause an accident so it's got a brand new primary chain on it so I just thought as soon as I'd noticed this I'd sort of show it I've been adjusting the primary chain and if you see there I've got it so that there's barely any free play and obviously you've got to rotate the engine and the clutch several times and check this at several points uh, because there will be tight spots and there will be slack spots even with a new chain especially on components that have run for many years and miles so it's always worth checking at several points of rotation but I'm hoping to point out something that I've seen on this one and it won't be uh, a unique case at all you have to watch the top run of the chain which like I say is pretty tight there and watch the clutch basket against the friction uh, the pressure plate I'm gonna grab hold of the top run of the chain and pull on it and watch the uh, clutch basket move now we've got a lot more slack if I turn the whole lot a bit Probably do it again. Let's put this where you can see it clearly. Yeah. What's happening is this wear between the clutch center and the clutch basket. The fit of the clutch basket or drum over the clutch center, there's a little bit of slop in that, enabling it to move around like that if you like. And so we're getting more random primary chain tension than you'd normally expect or want. Now while it's not the end of the world, it's not going to do any mechanical harm, I just don't want to make the mistake of having too tight a spot in the primary chain anywhere. I think I've probably got it at a satisfactory sort of level, but also the fact that the clutch basket can move like that against the centre, when the engine's running and actually pulling on that top run of the chain it could be making this slip towards the engine all the time which in itself could induce clutch slip so that's worth bearing in mind and this could happen on the Royal Enfield bullets as well and quite a few other makes of uh, motorcycle engine actually but I'm gonna put this back together now it's got the new primary chain on I'll perhaps give it one final check for adjustment I don't want it too loose um, I've got the timing chain to still attend to the adjustment of, I haven't even fitted the adjuster on that one yet. And then I think what I'll do is I'll get this bike to a point where it'll run and move under its own power and see how it goes then. But um, it's just an observation I thought I'd share and uh, like I say, where do you draw the line? You could fit a new clutch centre, new clutch basket, that probably... Uh, not great expense on their own but all these little bits and pieces add up and before you know where you are you've rebuilt the whole motorbike and thrown it away even though it was a runner so I'm gonna see how that goes and uh, we'll have another look at that when this thing's up and running and I'm riding it about and testing it now another thing that uh, I'd like to show on this Royal MQ 250 is the clutch and I've got it adjusted um, quite well I hope subject to it not slipping when I ride the bike and I'm going to demonstrate now I'll pull the clutch lever in here you see the pressure plate lift and I've got it in gear it's in top gear and I can actually spin the back wheel like that with the clutch held in so I know that it's releasing now so there I've let go of the lever on the handlebar now and I haven't even got a spark plug in the engine yet so there's no compression to give any resistance so that demonstrates that the clutch is releasing very, very well indeed. There shouldn't be any drag at all when it's all uh, put back together and up and running. Hopefully, that we'll be 
be able to get neutral quite easily and get good gear changes and possibly even not have any clutch slip in spite of the clutch basket being a bit of a loose fit on the centre but we'll see fingers crossed and we might have a good clutch on this at last I've done quite a bit already with this Royal Enfield 250 Continental model which is like an even sportier version of the Crusader Sports if you like um, it probably would have had a 5 speed gearbox originally but it's now got a 4 like a lot of them were retrospectively converted back to um, I've given it a full oil change I've had the primary side stripped down, I've done work on the clutch, I've fitted a new primary chain and uh, cleaned it all out in there I've um, changed the gearbox oil, well the gearbox was actually dry, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that the engine oil also covers the gearbox in these and it doesn't, there's another separate little filler there for your gear oil and for anyone that doesn't know this screw you take that out and you fill the gearbox with oil until oil starts coming out of there that's the level plug and that's totally separate from the engine so anyway I've got uh, gear oil in there, I've got engine oil in there I've put a little bit of oil into the uh, primary chain case as well that does share its oil with the engine so you must never put ATF in there for the clutch if that's your thing I've uh, adjusted, checked and adjusted the push rods because they were a bit slack um, fit a new battery I've had the main jet out and made sure it's clear and blown through the pilot passageways with an airline but I haven't dismantled and stripped the carburetor totally yet and I'm going to try my luck and see if it'll start the petrol in there looks like weak tea without milk so um, I don't know whether there'll be enough octane left in it to fire up but uh, let's give it a go and find out and if not I have to uh, probably take the carburetor off and have a look at it, but uh, it might start, so let's have a go. I know that there's a spark, so I think as there is a spark, I'm probably in with a reasonable chance. Compression gone. Well, that's strange. Oh well. I need to investigate that, and it didn't even fire, so um, there's a bit more work required yet before we get any life out of this one. Well I found that the engine was losing compression uh, via the exhaust valve because I could actually hear hissing down the exhaust pipe when I was kicking it but there was absolutely no compression there at all so what I've managed to do is I put, um, I used the end of this quite large screwdriver actually edge on underneath the exhaust valve rocker and just prized the valve open a little bit and then pulled the screwdriver away allowing the valve to slam shut probably only had it open by a millimetre or so you know no great big amount because I'd also noticed that there was um, play between the rocker and the push rod so I took a chance the engine's been stood a while and I thought maybe I'd dislodged a bit of carbon or something and it got in between the valve and the valve seat so um, I gave it a go like I just described and the compression is back So, with the compression restored, I'm going to get it ready to have another go because uh, I've taken the spark plug out.
just before as well and just verified and there's still a nice big fat spark there so um, I'm going to put the rocket cover back on lower the bike lift and just have another go and then if there's still nothing I'll take the carburetor off and probably empty the fuel tank and put some known to be good new fuel in it but uh, quite often I get these things to fire up on old fairly stale fuel so uh, I'll give it a chance on that first and uh, Let's see if there's no joy there, we'll change the fuel and try again. Well I've managed to restore the compression on this Royal Enfield 250 Continental and um, I've just double checked and there is a good spark there as well although I suspect any refusal to start will probably be either down to uh, the carburetor needing a strip down and or the old fuel but um, normally you'll get a cough or a pop out of old fuel at the very least and um, actually what's come through since rather than the rather cold tea looking stuff that was in the bottom of the carburettor um, stuff that looks more like petrol has come through since so I'm going to give it a go see what if anything might happen it's worth a try no choke slide in the carburetor on this one, you just got to flood it up really well. The amateur needle is moving when I turn it, so I know there's a spark. Although I've seen the spark on the spark plug as well. I can't get my fingers over the intake. It's so close to the tool and battery box. I like to put my hand over it and make it sort of suck harder than the jets. Ah, well it fired. And again. I opened the throttle fully to try and clear it, give it a gulp of air and it stayed fully open. So I'm going to take the carburetor off next and totally strip it. I think that would be a good plan and then we'll try it again and see what happens. Well since the last clip I've removed the carburetor and totally stripped it and uh, blown through all the passageways and even put some very soft copper wire through a couple of them and the pilot passageway did seem to be blocked along uh, the, the tunnel where the entry for the fuel is on the underside of the uh, the float bowl face on the body of the carburetor so the, where it comes to the 90 degree uh, turn to meet the passageway from the air screw it seemed to have a blockage there so I've cleared that I made a separate video about doing that a while ago so it's time now for me to knock it on the head for the day but uh, It'd be nice to finish on a high, so I'm just going to have one last go at starting this. See if it will fire up now after doing that work on the carburetor. It'd be nice if it does. You never know. So, let's just have a go. I think I might have a flat back here. Oh, so I left the ignition on by the looks of it. Good job we haven't been long. Right. it up. Let's see what happens if anything.
tight while we're still filming. I'll quickly take the spark plug out. Just check the boost of that spark. Soaking wet plug. I'll put another one in. Let's see what we've got here. Let's try this. Right, that's a brand new spark plug just got in. Ignition on. Not a lot happening there, is there? Something resembling a spark, perhaps. Ah, no sparks anymore. Oh, we've got a very, very weak spark. I think we'll come back to this tomorrow. battery a charge and we'll try it again. <coughs> Although the horn is uh, quite loud, the brake light is quite bright. I think we're going to have to work on the sparks department. We did have a spark before, but now the car's been cleaned, I suppose we've got to lose the spark, otherwise it might go. So watch this space for the next thrilling installment. Well, in spite of me trying a new plug, I've cleaned the old one up and shut the gap down on it and got a really bright spark now. So I'm just going to have one last go. about my camera's funny turn there but we got a runner or well, at least we had one right well I'm gonna quit while I'm sort of ahead we've seen it running the camera objected to it and by the time I faffed around with that the engine stalled but we have got a runner, so I've got something to work with now. So uh, we're going in the right direction with this thing at last, and it's a good point to stop at the end of the day. Okay.
Okay, so this is the day after, but I've literally just walked in here and without doing anything to the bike, I just thought I'd switch it on, turn the fuel on, tickle the carb, give it a few kicks and lo and behold, it started. Chronometric rev counter, it works like the chronometric speedos, it's sort of clicky and jumpy, but that's how they are. I don't know whether to push my luck, but uh, let's give it a go. Well, I haven't done anything at all to that since yesterday when I finally gave up, although I had had it running camera through a wobbly if we if you remember and um, I tried to give it one more start after sorting the camera out and it wouldn't have it. But here we are today and it's running. So I'm gonna check a few things now I'll switch off. No leaks around there that's good. The full oil pressure to the crank and the big end is in there. What I'll do now is I'll switch off and I'm going to check the uh, oil level, see if it needs topping up after it's run and settled down perhaps and um, try a few more starts along the way, perhaps have a go up and down the lane and if and when I feel confident enough I might take it a little bit further. We've got some vapour coming out, the inlet valve is open there, come round here I'll just press the kick start, get it onto compression and that'll stop that. So progress at last.